All right, this is your brother Aisha Yard coming at you with this truth. All right, but before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakai Kodash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstones I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing his word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. So, man, today, pretty much, man, I'm just going to go into it. We got to rejoice of the times that we're in, all right? We got to rejoice. Hold on one second. All right, we got to rejoice about the times that we're in, man. Because Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is working. He's working, man. And hopefully you all can hear me. Like I said, it's always windy. You know, there's this garment, my garment flying everywhere. <laughs> but it is what it is, man. All right. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is working, man. All right. He's working. Yesterday was big news because of the whole abortion thing. All right. A lot of people are in an uproar because of that. But the thing is, the thing is, the Most High is bringing division. All right, let's actually start with that real quick. The Most High is bringing division, like he said he was. All right, this place is getting ready to crumble, and we love it. We love it, man. We seeing the Most High do these things, man. And uh, it was funny because uh, <laughs> somebody posted something that was like, here it is, they made it illegal for you to get an abortion while we are in the middle of a crisis of a baby formula shortage. <laughs> Showing you that the Most High is getting ready to bring judgment upon this place, all right? So let's get Luke 12 and 51. And it says, Suppose ye that I am come to get peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division, all right? The Most High is bringing division. He's not coming to send peace on earth. Right now, everybody is not at peace. Everybody is divided against each other. And what does the scripture say? A house divided cannot stand. Satan against Satan, that place shall not stand, man. This place is getting ready to crumble. This is why we got to rejoice. We got to be happy, man. We seeing the Most High work. The Most High is getting ready to get his elect up out of here, man. He's getting ready to make moves upon this earth. Bloodshed is getting ready to happen. We keep trying to tell you people over and over and over again that the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. He's getting ready to destroy Babylon the Great. All right? So we got to prepare ourselves for the judgment that's getting ready to happen. But the difference between us and you all, especially us and the two thirds, are is we're trying, man. We're repenting daily. We're out here signing the crying for the abominations that be done thereof. So when we see things like the abortion thing happen, food shortages, baby formula shortages, so forth and so on, we get happy, man. We get happy. We get to the point where we like literally call Halai and get how about show me how it's shot, man? Because he's getting ready to bring this place down. Let's read it one more time. It says, suppose ye now come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, meaning no, but rather division. Okay? Division. This is what's getting ready to happen. Let's continue. It says, for from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This is what's getting ready to happen. The vision is already happening across the, across the country, all right, because nobody is seeing eye to eye. If you don't see eye to eye, you cannot operate correctly, all right? If you're not on the same page, you cannot operate correctly. That's why the scriptures tell us to stay away from people with different doctrines. You can't have a super unified camp if you all teach different things. And it's been a showcase, man. Fights have broke out because of brothers bringing out their belief of what they think it is compared to what another group may think. All right? Next thing you know, arguments happen, fights happen, all of these different things, man. So now when you look at America, Babylon the Great, this place is divided. You can already see it with Democrats, Republicans, even though we already know they're on the same team, but according to the people in the world, there's, that's two different parties right there, man. That's the vision. How are you gonna be two different parties, but you're gonna try to bring a, 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 a correct order within a, of this one country? You can't do it. You can't do it, man. And this is why we're rejoicing. 
we're rejoicing, all right? Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is getting ready to bring division within households, all right? Father against mother, like we just read. Daughter against mother, all right? These things are getting ready to happen, man. And like I said, Salakia, if you all can't hear, like I said, the wind is going in right now, but it's all good. You know, it'll go in from time to time, and then after a while, it'll stop for a little bit. Then, you know, it's cool. But as long as you all can hear me, that's really all that matters, all right? But we should be happy, man. When I heard that news yesterday, I rejoiced. I rejoice because the Most High is bringing judgment, man. He's getting ready to take us home, man. Be happy, man. We getting ready to get up out of here. Let's get that real quick, man. We getting ready to get up out of here. Finally, you know, we understand these scriptures. We understand what we are part of, and we ready for it, man. We pray for the downfall of Babylon the Great. This is Psalms chapter 32, verse 7. It says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouths must be held in with bit and brittle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows, many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in the spirit. Everybody that's upright in the spirit, everybody that's sighing and crying for the abominations, everybody that's fearing Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, everybody that's following the commandments, statutes, and laws to their best abilities, rejoice, man, because the Most High puts you in the right spirit. He puts you in the right spirit, man. And if you continue to do this, your righteous acts are going to get you beamed up in the chariot, man. This is what we working for. This is why we out here, man. This is why we upload the video. This is why we give the warning to the people. We rejoicing. We seeing this place go down, man. Call her like him. How about some of y'all shot? Let's go. Let's read it one more time. Be glad, Psalms 32 and 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. All right, your mind. We repenting and converted, right? We repenting and converted. Let's get that. Because that's what a lot of you need to do. A lot of you need to repent and be converted. You can't just say, oh, I believe in God and he's going to be okay with what I'm doing. He's going to accept me for who I am. Yeah, right, man. Bullshit. That's not how the, what the scriptures say. That's not how the Most High operates. He gave you an order. He told you to live a certain way, right? So you got to do that. This is Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send you how it shall help Mashiach, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which the Most High has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This is how you hear the, the, the words of the Lord. This is how you understand the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, through his prophets. So when we go out there and we act out the Isaiah 58 and 1, when we lift up our voices like a trumpet and tell you to stop sinning, tell you to repent from your ways, turn for your transgressions, this is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah speaking, man. This is him. This is not of us. We didn't come into this truth because we wanted to. The Most High put the Spirit upon us because he called us into it, man. He looked at us was like, man, this person is worthy enough to be part of the elect. And some of us, he already know. Not some of us, he already know all of us, all right? But we just don't know who it is. But right now, this is what we doing, man. We out here working, working. You're supposed to be glad that the Most High selected you. He called you into this thing. This is not something that's out of the ordinary. This is not something of a coincidence. The Most High was like, look, this person we get it. You got to think like that, man. The Most High gave you the understanding of these scriptures because he was like, this person can understand me. He didn't put this spirit upon everybody else. He didn't do it. He went out and was like, man, just leave those other niggas alone, man. Because they're not going to understand. They're not going to get it. But for you, everybody that's listening, everybody that's been tuning in to all the different brothers, 
tuning in to your to the apostles, listening, learning, studying. Man, he looked at you as like, yep, this person is gonna endure until the end, man. This person is gonna keep the faith until the end, man. Rejoice. Rejoice, man. Let's get another scripture, man. Let's get John 8 and 31. This is John chapter 8, verse 31. And it says, Then said you how was I to those Jews which believed on him? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All right? If you continue in his word, you are his disciple. You are a friend of Yahweh Shai. You can read about that in John the 15th chapter. We trying to become friends of the Lord, man, not enemies. Because the Lord does have enemies. Two-thirds of his own people are his enemies. Why? Because he's not listening to them. A lot of people blaspheme the Lord. Here you go, you got Kendrick Lamar. He's walking around in Paris or Italy right now, whatever. All right? And he's wearing a crown of thorns. But he, the crown of thorns is made out of jewelry. And he's rocking it like it ain't nothing. Mocking the Most High. I mean, mocking Yahweh Shai, man. All right? Scoffing. Doing these things as if he's the Lord. The brother, uh, the elder, Manata Zakba from South Carolina, just did a video on him. He chose humanity over religion. He chose Esau over the Most High. So what do you think is going to be his end? What do you think is going to be the end of the people who choose humanity over the word of the Lord, man? Destruction. Let's get that scripture, because this is a simple one, you know. This is one of the first ones you learn when you first come into this, Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein, all right? Two thirds of our people are going to be cut off and die, man. 66.6 .6 people, close to 70% of his own people are going to die. Just for the simple fact that they didn't want to repent. They didn't want to believe these scriptures. Here it is. You got a lot of hypocrites, man. You go to these churches and everything like that. The pastor, the pastor, so-called pastor, <laughs> he'll pull out the same Bible, right? Pull out the same Bible. It may be a different translation, but some of these churches use the King James. They'll pull out the same Bible, read the scriptures from that, and just because it sounds good, now you're like, oh, yeah, that is the word. That is the truth. I believe what you're saying, Pastor. Let's get that. But as soon as something that you don't agree with that, that's written in the scriptures, then we got a problem. Oh, now you got a problem. <laughs> now you got a problem. This is Isaiah chapter 30. <clears throat> Verse 9, it says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, that will not hear the law of the Lord, will say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy the seats. You all love to be lied to, man. You love drinking the Babylon juice. You have been drunken with the wine of Babylon. Babylon has gotten you to the point where you're living by their ways, and you love it. You love this world. You love everything about it. You don't care that the air is polluted. You don't care that the food is fake. You don't care that people are literally killing millions of babies a year because they want to have sex and not be responsible for what happens afterwards, man. You love that shit, man. You like being wicked. You like being wicked. So what is the Most High going to do to the wicked? Kill him, man. He's going to kill two-thirds of his own people, plus these heathen nations. These heathen nations, you're going into slavery, man. That's what's getting ready to happen. And we happy about that. Because we get tired of living in this polluted and wicked world, man. We want to be at rest finally. This is a world where everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong here, man. All right? Every time you look into a certain situation, you walk outside, you talk to your family member, whatever the case may be, it's always something wrong. That's why everybody always say, it's always something. It's always something. <laughs> yeah, because this earth is under weak-ass management, man. This earth is whack as hell. And then for you people that, that say, oh, you know, I can't imagine living in a place where I'm always happy. I'm always at rest. I don't want that. I want sometimes I do want to feel sad. Sometimes I do want to be angry because then I can appreciate the happiness more. Man, fuck that, man. 
You angry for years. You've been angry for years, centuries, decades. Angry, put down, in sorrow, depressed, all of that shit, man. I want to live a life where literally I can wake up every day and I don't have to worry about shit. Let's get that. Because that's what's coming. That's what's coming. I don't want to worry about anything, man. I just want to live my life. Please the most high. All right? I just want to make sure that I'm doing right by your how about show me how it's shot. And then after I do that, yeah, enjoy the pleasures of the earth. Because the earth is supposed to be paradise. But this is not paradise. It really isn't. This is Revelation chapter 21, verse, uh, let's start at 3. And it says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. This is what's getting ready to happen in the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh Shai is going to rule the earth. He's going to be here physically. It's no more, no more that going off shit going to be happening, man. Because the Most High is going to set up his 144,000. They're going to govern the earth. And Yahweh Shai is going to make sure everything goes according to plan. Every day. Every day. Forever. If you don't like it, die. And that's exactly what you're going to do. Verse 4. And it says, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yeah, the former things are passed away. This bullshit, the life we living in now, is not going to exist. It's getting ready to pass away. All right? So we get, we get excited for that, man, because we realize we got something beautiful for us, man. He said he gonna wipe away all tears. No more crying. No more, no more being in pain, man. We gonna have family members and they gonna be in their right mind. It says no more death. We ain't gotta worry about funerals. The heathen nations gonna have to worry about that. We gonna live forever. We gonna have thousands of kids, literally. Cause it says a little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a, a nation, man. We gonna have all the kids in the world. Then you people gonna appreciate that. <laughs> Y'all gonna appreciate that in the kingdom. Right now, y'all don't want families, man. Because y'all morals are off. Y'all ways of life are off, man. All you women out there talking about uh, my body, my choice, I'm pro-choice. Man, shut your ass up, man. A lot of you all use that abortion shit because you know you can get away with this shit. Because you like being whores, man. You like being whores. All right? Here it is. You go out there, you have sex with these random men. And you let them come inside of you. Excuse my language or whatever, but whatever. You let them do this shit, man. And then after that, you realize you're pregnant. Then you go to the doctor. Then you kill your baby. That's the majority of you. A million abortions a year, man? That's not all according to cases where you out here getting taken by a man and he's taking, he's taking your body, man. That is not all from that one case, man. A lot of you just using that because you don't want to deal with the responsibility. You just want the pleasures, man. But the Most High is getting ready to destroy you wicked women, man. He's getting ready to take you out. And if the Most High wanted you to get taken by a man, if he wanted you to go ahead and want that man to do whatever he, it was to you, that was judgment, man. That was judgment. That's why the scriptures say women was going to bring forth monsters, man. These evil, wicked children. This is the most high working. You all don't understand the Lord, man. Like I said, first of all, you women shouldn't even have no rights in the first place. No rights, man. As soon as Esau did that shit, this shit turned upside down, man. Along with taking the father out of the household. No rights, man. You're supposed to be under the vibration of your husband. Let's get that. Y'all don't understand that, though. Y'all don't like the word of the Lord. Plain and simple. Y'all hate the word of the Lord. This is Sirach chapter 36, verse 24. It says, He that getteth a wife begetteth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. Women are supposed to be a help meet for his, her husband. She was made for the man. All right, for the man. The most high is like, look, man should not be alone. I'm going to create the woman for him. So everything that you are, you belong to that man. 
the children belong to that man. You can easily Google. Do it. You can do it right now. You can go to Google, type in who gets custody of the child as soon as the child is born. You're going to see 80% of the U.S. automatically gives custody to the woman, man, to the mother. Without signing no papers, no nothing. It automatically belongs to the mother. And you know why they do that? Because they're trying to keep the man down, man. Because the man is supposed to be the leader of the household. If the man can't be there, the woman is going to fall, man. She's going to fail because she needs to be led, man. She needs to be told what to do. A lot of you women need to understand that. You're supposed to submit, be obedient to your husbands, man. So when you make the choice and say, it's my body, my choice, you're taking away, the, you're, you're taking away that man's possession, his child. That's his. All right? It's his. Now, of course, it's your, your son, your daughter as well, because you are the mother. But you got to remember, everything belongs to that man. So when you make those drastic decisions, man, you putting yourself in a very, very tight situation with the most high, man. Especially because you women keep doing it over and over and over again. This is not a thing where you just do it once a year. I literally just read from somebody on Facebook. He knows a woman who literally gets pregnant. I think he said every, every month? Every month, man. Every month. And then she goes to the doctor, she gets the procedure done, and then she's back out on the streets where she belongs, man. Y'all gonna learn, man. Let's get that real quick. Y'all gonna learn. Y'all gonna learn to fear you. How about show me how it's shot? Because he's getting ready to bring this judgment, man. And when it happens, <laughs> you women will not have a way out. You women will not have a way out, man. This is Isaiah chapter 32, verse 11. It says, Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. All right, tremble, meaning be scared, fear. Because as soon as the Most High unleashes the all-out judgment, the all-out hell, you ain't going to have nowhere to go, man. Nowhere to hide. You will not be safe. All of you women out there on Instagram, Snapchat, OnlyFans, Facebook, Twitter, websites all of that shit man all of y'all over here flaunting your bodies no shame at all guess what these men are gonna remember you they're gonna remember you man because when this place become lawless which it will which it will when this place becomes lawless you women are gonna be remembered by these men all of these thirsty ass dudes these simple motherfuckers out here the ones who who's making you rich <laughs> the ones who's paying those monthly subscriptions so they can do whatever it is <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bedroom, when they realize that they can actually go outside and find you, you're going to know that was the Lord who did that to you, man. You're going to know. You are going to know, all right? But let's go. Let's switch gears, man, because y'all got to learn, man. Let's get Habakkuk 2 and 1. This is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Hold on one second. All right, we back. So this is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. And it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I will shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The day of the Lord will not tarry, man. We are in those days, man. We seeing the famine happen. We seeing the division happen. We seeing all of these things happen in the world. The prophecies are speaking. These scriptures are speaking. You all still don't believe what we're saying is true. <laughs> you want to believe the lie, man. That like that uh, Eminem and Rihanna song. I love when you lie to me. You know that shit. <laughs> Y'all like it, man. Y'all like it. Y'all want to keep living in this fairy tale as if America is the greatest place on earth. Here it is. This place is destroying you every single day. And you keep giving this place a chance? That's the definition of being an idiot, man. That's the definition of being delusional. 
It's something mentally wrong with you, man. And we all know that you all have demons. You have evil spirits upon you, all right? So when you keep trusting in this place, let's get that real quick. When you keep trusting in this place, it's going to lead to your demise, man. This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. The more that you trust in this place, the more that you keep being a part of this place, you're adding sin to sin. Why? Because that's what this place is all about. This place is not about following the commandments, statutes, and laws. This place is not about fearing the Lord, man. This place is about sinning, okay? They want you, they want you to keep eating abominable foods. They want you to celebrate these holidays. They want you to not follow the laws, man. They want you to keep doing these things, especially if you're a Negro, Latino, or Native American. They want you to keep doing these things. Why? Because the more and more that you keep loving this world and staying a part of it, that's the longer that Esau will be in rulership because the Most High is going to continue to destroy us, man. This is why we get angry. This is why we get pissed because we want to go home, man. Apostle Tahar literally said it. He was like, if all of Israel right now would wake up to who they are, realize that we have a power out here, realize that we have a way out of here, and we all just face the east, praise you, how about Shem Yahushai, the most high will bring the destruction today. It'll be over with. All of Israel will go home. But no, man, we got to go according to the prophecies, and we understand that. And we understand that judgment needs to happen to two-thirds of our own people. Because you all would not understand and realize what the Most High is all about. And yes, we waiting for that day. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be terrible. Yeah. But at the same time, we're going to understand why it happened to you. We're going to walk down the street, hear women scream. They're going to be in bushes or abandoned buildings somewhere. All you're going to be hearing is screaming because they're going to get ravished. Grown men are going to be afraid. Let's get that. Men gonna be afraid out here, all right? It's gonna get ugly, man. Hold on one second. It's gonna get ugly, man. I know it's in, uh, here it is. This is second Ezra chapter 15. Let's start at uh, 14. It says, woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. That division is coming, man. For there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. It's going to become a time where you people would not even consider or even think about what your president or your governor or your mayor is talking about. Y'all going to realize that they all going to bullshit, or... Y'all going to just be like, look, y'all not making the correct decisions according to what we want. So now we got to make a move. And it's starting. A lot of y'all already protesting right now because of what happened yesterday. All right. Verse 17, it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Yeah, checkpoints are coming because they getting ready to lock this place back down. Joe Biden said it. Look it up. I ain't going to say the word because you already know YouTube might be on some bullshit. <laughs> But you, man, Joe Biden said it, all right? It's been, man, it's getting ready to get back real out here, man, just like 2020, but only worse, all right? Because martial law is going to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. You're going to try to go into another area or whatever, you ain't going to be able to. And one of the main reasons why is because of the MOTB. They're going to make sure that you have that, man. They're going to stop you, just like they were doing uh, two years ago. People are trying to go into different cities, and guess what? If you ain't had that card, if you ain't had that proof, and you already know what I'm talking about, you couldn't go. You had to go to the nearest facility or whatever that they said that you had to go to, man. And like I said, this time is going to be on a greater scale. And one of the reasons being is because they're going to eliminate anybody that doesn't have the MOTB, which is the chip. If you don't have that, man, either they're going to take you to the nearest prison, FEMA camp, or they're going to get rid of you, man. This is why we got to keep the faith until the end because we understand that this is going to happen 
to the elect. But the elect is going to be saved out of it. That's the difference, all right? Even though some of us may become martyrs, but hey, we still going to be saved even if you went out like that. If you are part of this truth and you laid up your treasures in heaven and you became a martyr, the scriptures tell you the ones that died, they're going to be the first ones to be beamed up in the chariot. So it's victory, man. Victory. Palms in your hands. <laughs> Verse uh, eight, uh, 18. And it says, For well, because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. This is how terrible it's getting ready to be out here, man. Grown men is about to be afraid. Big swole men, whatever. Men who know how to fight, do all these different things. They're going to be afraid, man. Because guns and everything are not going to save you. They're going to realize that the position they're in is fucked up and there's no way for them to get out. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful, man. Because we keep trying to warn you people. This is the anger of the Most High. His indignation. His righteous anger. This is what he's getting ready to do, man. Destroy this place. Verse 19, it says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right? The food shortages, like I was speaking about earlier, is happening. All right? And it's going to get to the point where it will be an all out famine. It's going to be a famine. No food, no water. Here it is, they're reporting shortages for condiments. <laughs> you can't even go to the store and get a, a bottle of ketchup for your burger, man. <laughs> you can't get no mustard. You can't even hook it up. <laughs> you gotta go to the store in certain places, just deal with it. You gotta make your sandwich just bread and meat. Deal with it, man. Soon as it's gonna be meat or just bread. Cause here it is, I was at work today looking at a pack of prime tenderloins, right? The steak. Prime steak tenderloins. Four steaks. Four steaks. $70. $70 for four steaks. That's like a, 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 a one sitting, man. Two for one person, two for the other. Gone. That food could be gone. Especially if you eat quick. If you eat quick, that food was gone in literally probably like 10, 15 minutes. $70 gone, out, gone down the drain that fast. Because inflation is happening. All right? Inflation is happening. It's going to get bad out here, man. It's going to get bad out here. And when it does, it's like, let's read it again. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. All of you goody, goody, two-shoe, buddy, buddy people out there that love your friends, you love your family, you always say, i never turn on them. Yeah, let's see what happens in those days. Let's see what exactly happens. We, you're going to realize that, hey, this individual, man, they actually got some good shit over there. I just literally went over there, and they, they living all right. You ain't going to be thinking about, thinking about making an alliance. Yeah, let's, let's come together so we can survive together. No, man, a lot of you going to get desperate. A lot of you going to get desperate, and you're going to hesitate. And you're going to be thinking about yourself in those days. And it's going to continue because you're already thinking about yourself right now. A lot of you don't think about other people, really. A lot of you got the fake mask on, man. The fake smile. You run up on people, you speak to them, you have conversations with them, and you don't even really feel those people. You don't have no feelings for those people. You just do the shit just cause. All right? Because that's what this generation is all about. Me, 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 me. Let's get that. That's all this place think about. All right? They, all you think about is, I don't got to make it. I got to make it. All right? And that's what's destroying a lot of our people. Because uh, especially, you know, these rappers and everything, they'll go into the hoods and they'll be like, look, man, I got to take care of me and my family. So if that means I got to, you know, kill somebody or sell drugs to my own people just so I can come up, I'm cool with that. Y'all wicked, man. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It says, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. You hear that? Men shall be lovers of their own selves. Everybody is out here just loving themselves, man. Look at what I did today. Selfie this, selfie that. Look at what I ate today. Ooh, ah. 
Some people can't. Some people just live off of social media. They can't even get off of it for for ten minutes. I told somebody that one time. I was like, man, I went up on here today, and you pretty much posted like every fifteen minutes. You ain't you went down your whole day without putting the phone down, man. <laughs> well, what else are you doing? And they're like, yeah, I'm guilty of that. You know, I just I just be depressed. I just be lonely. So I just post things or whatever. And, and, and those be the same people that say, I only get like three, four, five likes. Nobody really like my shit anyway. Because <laughs> you're looking for attention. Because like I said, it's that fake love, man. It's that fake love. All right? And it says, again, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Woo, y'all unthankful. Y'all unthankful. Here it is, the most high is showing a lot of y'all mercy because we still out here teaching, man. But y'all unthankful for that though. Y'all don't want to listen to that. Unholy, definitely unholy. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the most high. See? You love the things of this world more than the most high. You will you'll live for today. And that's what they push, man. They always say that. They're like, man, I'm going to go ahead and just go out, go all out and do what I got to do today because tomorrow ain't promised. Yeah, tomorrow ain't promised. But that don't mean you should just do wickedness just because. Same shit they say with the letter community. It's 2022. We still talking about them. Man, it's the future now, man. It's been years since that time since those people existed. It's been years since that, man. This let the people live. So you're trying to tell me the more and more we go into the future, that's the more and more we should just allow filth? Really? Really? You people are backwards, man. You people are backwards. Verse five, it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. All right? For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. A lot of y'all would never come to the knowledge of this truth because you want to keep being a part of Babylon the Great, man. So you can never be a part of this glory. You can never taste this heavenly gift. Never taste the heavenly gift, man. You ain't worthy enough for it. The most I ain't dealing with filthy people, man. He ain't dealing with people that just want to continue to be dirty, continue to be wicked. The scriptures tell us even our righteousness is as filthy rags because we in this flesh. We living in this society, all right? So if our righteousness is as filthy rags, how much more filthy then are you all that's not even trying to follow the ways of Yahweh by some Yahweh shot, man? Y'all through, through. We just patiently waiting. Patiently waiting for a track to explode on. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, we waiting, man. We waiting for the Lord to come back and bring back righteousness, man. I want that. I don't know about y'all, but I want that, man. I don't want to keep living here. The brothers and sisters that's in the know, the brothers and sisters that's in the truth, we want to get up out of here, man. We understand what we got coming for us. One of the things I always think about is the new bodies, man. Can't wait to be in the new bodies. Back always hurting, get tired, you know? Man, these bodies are just weak. Can't wait to be a god, man. That's what we get ready to be. We get ready to be gods. Let me grab that real quick before I got the scripture that um, I had on deck. We getting ready to be gods, man, but this is this is the punishment that the most I put us in right now, man. This is Psalms. Chapter 82, verse uh, 6. Let's get to the point. It says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. We are gods. What's one of the reasons why we are gods? It's because of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The scriptures tell you that in the book of Genesis, man. He didn't want us to eat from the tree of righteousness yet. He wanted us to experience good and evil. Apostle Ricard brought that out. He was like, what is the kingdom really going to be about? Wisdom. This is what's going to make us gods, man. That's why the Most High said, 
oh, he's eating for the he's he ate from the tree, meaning his knowledge, he's learning the way of the life. He was like, now he shall be like one of us. When you're speaking about him and the angels. And what are they? They're gods, they're powers. All right. The angels are spirits, all right, and the most high is a spirit as well. But he's a power, man. He's an everlasting power. All right. So that's what we're getting ready to be. But we're getting ready to be godlike on the earth. And that's what Esau doesn't want, man. He doesn't want us to achieve that goal because he already know that the 144,000 is getting ready to wake up. He knows that true power is getting ready to be manifested in this earth, man. This is Psalms chapter 82, verse 6 again. It says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Why did he say that? Because we was going to be in his flesh. He didn't give us our, our crown. He didn't give us our bodies, man. We were going to die like the heathen nations because we kept going against the commandments, statutes, and laws. But we are literally in our last captivity. We are in the last captivity. This is it. And we want to be part of the first go around, man. We want to make it the first time around, all right? So we can actually experience, man, some of us might not even die. Some of us might not even die. Some of us are actually going to be changed. Get beamed up in a chariot and actually see the kingdom being built up from the ground up. We ain't got to worry about coming back into it. We want to see the downfall of our enemies. The scriptures speak about that. Happy shall we be to see the downfall of our enemies. We want to see it. We don't want to be part of it. What type of shit is that? Why would you die with your enemy? Why would you die so shameful? <laughs> Come on, man. Get with it. This is Isaiah chapter 54. Let's go to Isaiah 54. And 4. Let me check this real quick. Alright, this is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 4, and it says, Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and, th and shalt not remember the reproach of thy wid widowhood anymore. Let's read it one more time. Isaiah 54 and 4, it says, Fear not, thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thy husband. All right, because the, the Most High compared us to a precious woman. All right, that's why Yahweh Shai is the bride, and we're the you know I mean the, he's the bridegroom, Salakia, so and we're the bride. All right, it says for thy maker is thy husband, and what the Most High is doing is he's bidding the elect to the marriage. All right, meaning. He's bringing back the elect. He's bringing the elect back to the commandments, statutes, and laws. He's gonna start off the kingdom of heaven with them. All right. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The power of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord called thee as a woman forsaken, see, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, said thy power. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. The Most High is getting ready to gather us, man. He's getting ready to bring us back home. All right? He, forsake, he forsook us only for a little while. But this is about to be it. This is why we always say this captivity is only temporary. The Most High is not going to allow the, the, this Esau to keep destroying the earth, man. This is his creation. He's not going to allow his creation to be ran down, man. He's going to stop it right on time. Right on time. All right. Verse 7 again. It says, For a small moment have I forsaken thee. Yeah, a small moment. It may seem like a long time for us because, like I said, we're in this flesh and we patiently waiting. But we understand that the day is coming, man. The day of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is coming. That's why the scriptures say as well, Unless the days be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. All right. These days fly past, man. They fly. They fly. I remember 2020 like it was yesterday. And here we are going in the middle of 2022. We in the last half. We're going into the last half of this year already, man. Most sides working. 
verse 8 and it says in a little wrath i hear my i hear my face from thee for a moment but with everlasting kindness will i have mercy on thee saith the lord thy redeemer redeemer he's going to redeem us man he's getting ready to bring the excellency the beauty back to the nation of israel yasharala he's getting ready to put us back in our righteous state he's getting ready to set us up on the earth as the kings and the priests the rulers the top people who we supposed to be he made us go through seven captivities man seven major captivities i should say all right we in the last one completion all right the true people are getting ready to rule this earth we're getting ready to rule this earth let's get that revelation i believe it's revelation five and nine yeah this is revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and it says and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book who was worthy yahweh shot this is how we able to understand these scriptures so for all of you people that don't believe in the new testament you got a problem how can you know that you're an israelite how can you understand these scriptures yahweh shot went on the cross and died so we can understand these scriptures if he didn't do that we'll never we would never know that we were israel man all right it says thou art ready to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain see it has redeemed us to the most high by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation see there go that word redeemed all right and when it says every kindred tongue and people and nation it's speaking about the Is israelites that's coming out of these different nations because we were scattered through the four corners of the earth you got some Israelites that look like the heathen nations, and then you got Israelites that just look like who they are, all right? And he's getting ready to take us out of these places, man. Verse 10, and said, it has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. This is what's getting ready to happen, man. Rejoice for that. Rejoice for that, man. We're getting ready to reign on the earth. Yahweh Shai did a great deed. He did the perfect deed. He deserves the earth. He deserves the universe. He deserves to be sitting alongside the Most High Yahweh. He deserves that place, man. You know, everything, him going on that cross and him being that ultimate sacrifice did a lot for us as a nation, man. Did a lot for us. Without him going on that cross, we couldn't even get into the kingdom of heaven, man. We couldn't even reign here on earth. So, yes, we get praises too. Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. We understand that there's an order. We understand that it's Yahweh, then Yahweh Shai, then the man, then the woman. We understand order, and we'll take it like that, all right? We're not going to get out of order, Lord willing. We want to stay in the spirit and do things according to the way that it is written, all right? Let's get one last scripture, and then we'll close it out. Let's get uh, Revelation 3 and 3, okay? And it says... Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent, and therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt know, not know what hour I will come upon thee. Alright? If you don't follow these commandments, statutes, and laws, if you don't start fearing the Lord, the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night to you. Alright? That's what's getting ready to happen to two-thirds of our people. When this place get ready to collapse, they're going to be afraid man they're gonna be caught off balance all right this jerk jumps to verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown hold fast this knowledge man hold it don't let it go don't let the things of this world persuade you don't let the things of this world get you out of the way hold fast to this wisdom so you have a shot to give you a crown man fight for that crown Verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my power, and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, was coming down out of heaven from my power, and I will write upon him my new name. All right? So if you keep enduring and do what you're supposed to do, you're going to be the first fruits of the kingdom, and you're going to be alongside Yahweh Shai, man. The 144,000 are going to rule alongside Yahweh Shai. The rest of the one-third, y'all going to be ultimately blessed, man. Blessed out of this world. 
and we're going to be in righteousness. We're going to be happy. All right. So, right, like I said, rejoice because this place is going down, man. This is the year of the turn up. The year of the turn up, man. Rejoice. Be thankful. Be happy that you see this place crumbling right before your very eyes, man. All right. Hey, man. So I hope it was edifying. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekai Kodash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing his word to the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratza, I'll be back. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.